Hey, this is a review of the EPFL Coursera Functional Programming in Scala Specialization. The course is led by Martin Odeski, the designer of Scala, and it's become the default introductory course that most Scala engineers start with. Although there are five courses in the specialization, I think it's only really worth bothering with the first two, functional programming principles in Scala and functional program design in Scala. At a high level, Scala is interesting for three reasons. First, it's a functional programming language. Second, for distributed programming. And third, for concurrent processing. So the first thing that makes Scala interesting is that it's a functional programming language on the JVM. Functional programming is a big topic, uh, but the main idea is that you use immutable variables and that makes concurrent and distributed programming much easier. That's what the first two courses are about, uh, functional programming principles in Scala, functional program design in Scala, and those courses are definitely worth doing. The third course is on the parallel collections in Scala, but if you're new to functional programming, I wouldn't bother with this. They change the lecturers, and I think they're not very good at explaining the ideas. You get bogged down in the Scala syntax, and from a practical standpoint, if you actually want to use the parallel collections in Scala, all you have to do is just write dot par, and uh, the Scala documentation is a much better place to understand about these collections. The fourth course is on Spark, which is a distributed processing engine written in Scala, and Spark is one of the main reasons that Scala is so popular these days. However, if your goal is to learn Spark, then don't bother with this course. The course is a bit out of date, and it teaches a low-level Spark API called RDDs, which is similar to working with Scala collections, but is very different from the more modern SQL-like APIs that Spark recommends. There's even packages like Koalas for Python users, which is very similar to Pandas. Even if you do want to use Scala Spark, you might as well just learn the Spark API uh, in a specialist Spark course. The third reason that Scala is used is for uh, concurrent programming or multitasking. Uh, with a package called ACA, but this isn't covered at all in this specialization, although there is another course that I plan to review uh, which does cover this. Finally, there's the capstone, which I don't think is worth doing either. It's nice to work on something a bit more substantial, but you end up writing very small parts. It doesn't feel very different from a larger assignment, and uh, in general just isn't worth isn't worth doing I don't think you learn that much from it so now we're going to take a deep dive into the first module functional programming principles in Scala there are seven sections or weeks uh, each with about an hour's worth of lecture videos and then a programming assignment which includes some methods that you need to implement yourself and then you upload it uh, and have it reviewed and marked. There are, in my view, three main sections to the course. In the first couple of weeks, you learn basic concepts in functional programming like recursion, higher order functions, currying, the assignments related to these are fairly basic, often just a, a few lines, but if you're new to Scala and functional programming, it's 
not that easy, it will take a, take a bit of effort. So in the second part by about week four you work your way up to basic collections like lists and how their associated methods are implemented in a functional way. Stuff like insert, remove, a lot of this involves pattern matching on the head and tail of lists. Here the emphasis switches quite heavily to the theory of functional programming and the trade-offs in designing a functional programming language with ideas like decomposition, variance, Liskov's substitution principle. The assignments up to this point I think are doable at least within a couple of hours but then the last two assignments on Huffman coding and anagrams I think are a big step up. The good news is that there are detailed instructions in both the assignment notes and the code itself, but apart from that you are kind of on your own, which is the big disadvantage of this sort of online learning. And unfortunately you just have to struggle a bit. I would expect to spend more than three hours on it, especially if you're new to Scala. Uh, I would say it takes at least an hour to read all the documentation and wrap your head around what is going on. Occasionally when I got really stuck I was able to find other people's githubs. Uh, they do exist but I really wouldn't recommend it or rely upon it because oftentimes people have uh, either got it wrong or it's not very helpful or they use some obscure Scala you haven't seen before. I think the key lifesaver is that you have test cases which you can run against so you can iteratively work in your code and each function is fairly small so you can make sure that it works before moving on. In the third section now that you have uh, these methods things like map and uh, fold left and group buys you can use them then to uh, create new functions and uh, definitions and uh, you start to use the tools like pattern matching for comprehensions uh, as you would in a professional Scala environment. So the second module functional program design in Scala has only four parts but this time there's about an hour and a half of lecture video plus the usual assignment. The second module is all centered around and building up the idea of futures, which you can think of as IOUs. Futures are a functional programming construct that are used everywhere in multitasking and concurrent applications, where the key idea is rather than wasting time waiting for a function to return, you instead immediately get back an IOU of future. Uh, freeing you to go do something else. By analogy, imagine you're cooking a meal in the kitchen. If you have to wait 30 minutes for something to be done in the oven, it obviously makes sense to use that time to go and do something else and futures allow you to do that in programming. Then when you actually need the result, you can check the IOU to see if the result is available and if it is, you can use it. Of course, if you're passing around lots of these IOUs, it's useful to come up with some functions associated with them, things like maps, which allow you to, to do the same thing to everything uh, in the function. So uh, this module is about building up towards futures. Behind this simple idea is a lot of functional programming theory. Uh, and so a lot of the course is about laying down some of those foundations, starting with things called monads which generalize the idea of having a map function uh, and generalize the idea of making something composable. There's also a lazy evaluation uh, before finishing with futures and how to compose and combine them. The assignments for the second module I didn't find uh, as hard as the first module 
and I wouldn't say they were as useful either. With a lot of the solutions mainly involving some pattern matching and some four expressions, but nonetheless it's still a good way to get used to writing Scala and some of the basic constructs. To finish up I want to go over a few logistical things. In terms of cost, Coursera works on a monthly subscription fee, so the faster you work the less money you spend. Uh, they recommend seven months, you definitely don't need that much time, uh, but it is a big course. I would say to do just the first two modules you need at least 40 hours and to do the entire specialization something north of 100 hours so I would plan for at least a couple of months subscription. Some caveats are first of all this course is not for programming beginners. You don't need to have experience in functional programming or experience with Scala but you should definitely be comfortable programming and with basic programming constructs and have done a lot of Python or Java, some other programming language. A lot of online courses are very practical and applied. So if you were to do an introduction to Python course, a lot of it would be about syntax and learning the basic structures. This course is not that. It feels like an academic course first. So there's a lot of theory and explanation as to how and why Scala is designed the way it is. And some of this feels unrelated to the exercises you're doing. And some of the lectures can feel quite passive, as if you're just watching the lecturer explain some Scala. To give you an example, uh, one of the important concepts in functional programming is something called a monad. And those lectures feel academic. They're uh, quite dense and involve a lot of uh, complicated functional programming concepts. Um, despite that though, the course is not comprehensive. So even if you complete uh, all five steps of the specialization, you still haven't been introduced to basic error handling uh, with options. And even though you've seen some Scala data structures, there are many you haven't seen. And if you look at uh, the kind of zoo of functional objects, we don't cover applicative functors or monoids, it's just the basic monads. Uh, so there's still a lot left to learn. Nonetheless, this course is the go-to introduction, go-to start for anyone who wants to learn about Scala and functional programming, and it's highly recommended.